All right, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, wherever you guys might be listening in from. Um, by just a quick um, chat back and forth, could you just type in a double Y if you can hear me and you can also see my screen? Just wanna make sure that people can hear me and see my screen. Just type in a double Y in the chat box. Uh, let me make sure I have the uh, questions box out here. Excellent, trader, trader, all right. Trader, trader, member, member. <laughs> so I guess uh, I, I don't know your name, what I'm seeing here. Okay, I see Barbara on here. So great, Barbara, thank you for being on the call. But some of you guys, uh, I saw trader, trader, member, member, webinar member. I don't know your name. So please uh, forgive me for not using your name. Uh, Ratliff, I see you. Otto, welcome. Welcome, guys. So today uh, we are going to be talking about modern candlesticks, or what I consider to be modern candlesticks. Now, Maybe you might have heard of me, maybe you might not have heard of me, but hopefully the things that I share here today would be of interest and help you understand the stock market uh, the way I understand the stock market. Okay, so today uh, we're, what we're going to do is I'll share with you uh, one in particular candlestick signal that I discovered, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll see examples of that. Uh, we'll see how it's playing out now, and then honestly, we'll just answer questions that you might have uh, and, and see how that goes. Fair enough. So that's that's the agenda for today. That's what we're going to try to do. Uh, so, uh, but before we get started, you know, uh, Anna, I want to thank her a lot for uh, allowing me to, you know, kind of put this together, talk to you guys about what we do. Uh, but at the same time, I understand that there's still some other people you know, log it in and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to just tell a little bit about myself before I go into the meat and potatoes of the presentation today. So that that way, by the time, you know, the next 10, 15 minutes rolls around, uh, most of the people that needs to be on the call will be here. So they won't be missing the biggest part of today's presentation. The goal is to do maybe 45 minutes or an hour. I, I, I would not try to go more than an hour. And my hope is that again, by the time we're done, you guys will understand how to use uh, this modern candlesticks in your trading, all right? Um, by show of hands or like by typing in, how many people know what this candlestick signal is? Does anybody know? And if you don't know the answer, just type in nope or NA. Uh, but if you know what this candlestick signal is, let me know in the chat box, who knows what this candlestick is because the candlestick is nothing new by the way and I, I didn't i didn't create this candlestick i discovered it um by just studying charts and stuff like that but uh as much as i've read books on candlesticks as much as i've watched so many videos on candlesticks when i found out about this candlestick at that time i had no idea what it was and so uh, it baffled me because i was like hey what is this candlesticks uh, what it is. So, so I'm hearing a lot of people saying no, they don't know what this candlestick is. So don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. And this is why I say is the modern candlestick. So Axel says he knows what it is. Very good. Okay. So I have one person out of everybody that says they know what this candlestick is. Uh, good job, by the way, Axel, for uh, if you understand what this is. Okay. Um, but today we're going to talk about this because this is what I consider to be the modern candlesticks. And the reason why I call it modern candlesticks is because, um, again, a lot of people know about candlesticks, but this is one of those that has been occurring a whole lot more in today's market. Okay. Now, Cena is saying that they cannot hear me. I hope that Cena, uh, I don't know how to let Cena know. I want to see if I can chat Cena and let Cena no. So give me one second here. I don't even know how I can get in touch with Cena. Um, the sound is okay. Okay, please. Okay, good. So thank you, Anna, for helping me with that. So uh, long story short, the goal here is I'm going to show you a lot more about this candlestick. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step directions on how to identify it, how to use it uh, today so that that way going forward from here on out, uh, you can use it. So uh, before I tell you what this is, let me tell you a little bit about just what we who we are, what we do. First and foremost, this is our risk disclosure statement. Please understand one thing, and that is I am not a financial, licensed financial advisor. I am not, okay? So I'm not going to recommend this is a stock to buy, this is a stock not to buy, okay? So please understand that. When all, all I'm gonna be doing is showing you what I learned, what I've discovered, what I use, and hopefully 
can take that information, use that to help you as well. Okay, now I don't have any problem discussing with you, um, you know, the details of what I've learned and how I use it and all that kind of stuff. But again, I'm not going to say go buy this stock or go sell this stock, but I'll show you what I do and how I use this to help me with my trading. So a little bit about who I am. Some of you guys said you've heard of me before. Others have said you've never heard of me before. That's fine. If you've never heard of me before, my name is Wally, Wally Olapade. Um, I am the chief technical strategist over here at Right Side Trading. I have 17 years of accounting background, um, also in finance and investing. Uh, I used to do real estate investing. We did mergers and acquisitions. We did all kinds of stuff. So I have a lot of years, but I, I stayed within the financial sector. Um, in 2008, as uh, most of you guys already know, I, I was heavily invested in real estate. I was a big time real estate investor and uh, I lost a lot um, in 2008. Um, but during that period of time, I also realized that the stock market was something that a lot of people were talking about, kind of like what happened in 2020 during the pandemic. In 2008, that was my 2020 pandemic. Long story short, I realized that there were people who knew what they were talking about and there were people who did not. But my thing was, I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know who to follow. I didn't know who, uh, to rely on. And I just told myself I never wanted to have to rely on somebody else. I wanted to know how to do this on my own. And so I embarked on this journey in 2009 to study the stock market. Uh, I placed my first trade in 2012 and I made a lot of mistakes, a lot, a lot of mistakes. Uh, I blew my account in 2013. I went full-time trading in 2013, blew my account three times. Then I had to sit back and reevaluate everything I did. And I said, why am I losing money? I've studied the courses, I've gone to the seminars, I've, I've watched the webinars, why am I still losing money? And so I, I, I took a step back, started studying technical analysis a whole lot more. And next thing I know, I started doing better, I understood things. And part of the key things about what I understood is this part right here where it says, I specialize in identifying sound companies at attractive prices, with low risk and potential for capital appreciation. And what I mean by that is um, my background in accounting, when I when I had to sit back and say, what am I doing wrong? I said, I, I remembered when I was with the mergers and acquisition company, my job with the mergers and acquisition company was to look at the financial statements of companies they were trying to buy and acquire. And it was, my, uh, it was me and a team of guys that would make a recommendation after we did our analysis just by looking at the financial statements to see whether this is a good company to own and buy or whether we should not. And what ended up happening was I started looking at that and I said, wow, if I can use this to identify good companies that I'm recommending to these mergers and acquisitions, or well, can I use the same thing in the stock market? And so I started using that same analysis in the stock market. And one of the first things I started realizing was, wow, in the mergers and acquisitions, one of the things we had to do was we needed to see a company that has been doing, you know, the, 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 the behavior pattern of that company over a period of years, maybe two, three, four, five years. And so I kind of like just took the same thing and said, how can I apply that in the stock market and using technical analysis, like what would be the evidence that this is a great company that is ready to go higher? What would it look like on the chart? And that's what I really started studying in 2014, 2015. And by 2016, I was able to connect the dot between all the, you know, if a company has a good PE ratio and it's ready to go up, how would that look like on a chart? And that's kind of like what I ended up doing. And so from there, I started focusing strictly on good companies. I don't like to take risk. So if you're the type of person that doesn't like taking risk, what I'm about to share with you would help you a lot. And, and my thing is to focus on good companies, very good companies, um, making sure that we're buying it when the prices are low. And when I say prices are low, I'm not talking about prices are like $1, $0.05 or something like that. That's not what I'm talking I'm not talking about penny stocks. Um, I could find Google. I want to know when is the price of Google at its lowest so it's time to buy before it starts rallying. What I don't want to do is start buying Google thinking that the price is low because it had a drop in price. And then we see it keep on going further down. I don't want to do that. So if a stock is trading at 300, and then it went from 300 down to 250. If 250 is the lowest it's going to be before it starts going higher, how do I see that? 
right? But if it comes down to 250, but it's gonna continue going down to 200 and 150 and 100, how do I make sure that I don't get caught buying it at 250 only to see it go all the way down to 100? Does that make sense? And that's kind of like what I wanted to study and see if there was a way to see that on a chart. And I was so happy to see that. So today, one of the biggest things I'm gonna show you is one of the patterns that usually shows up right before a stock reverses back up. So uh, if you've heard people, and I saw this a lot during the pandemic, especially after the pandemic 2021, uh, is that, and especially earlier last year, 2022, um, more than anything uh, last year, uh, January through, through June, July last year, is that the market would drop one day, have a red candle, and people was like, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Okay, I'm gonna show you that buying the dip is not necessarily the way. You need to see certain things. And so when 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 the stock market would drop in one day, people would just buy the dip. And then uh, that happened a lot with cryptocurrencies. And then what happened is it dropped some more. And people would say, oh, no, 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 don't sell, buy some more. And then it drops some more, and then it keeps on dropping. And then before they knew it, they are down 70%, 80%, 90% on these stocks and, 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 and cryptos. And I say, this is why you don't just buy the dip. I'm gonna show you one major sign that you need to see is like, okay, if the stock is dropping, 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 when it is ready to start heading back up, it would show certain signals. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that people made in 2022, not looking for that signal and just buying because it was red. I saw people on YouTube saying, oh, my strategy is buy every red candle. Whenever the market is red, just buy it. So you can't really do that. I don't do that. And I'm gonna show you, this is why I said, today's topic is modern candlesticks will help you identify when a stock is at the bottom and is ready to start heading back up. I don't want to buy a stock that, you know, just because it went from 100 to 50, you think that's as low as it's going to go. But what if it goes from 50 down to 25? I don't want that. I want it to be where it's at the bottom, ready to start heading back up. And I'm going to show you how to see that with just one signal. Okay, that's what we're going to do here today. So because of that, uh, my expertise has allowed me to be able to call the top of the cryptocurrency crash back in January. I have literally a video on my YouTube channel. Anybody can go see that. I posted that YouTube video on January 10 or January 11 of 2022. And I said, guys, the warning signs is here. Get out of cryptocurrencies. Whatever you do, don't trade cryptocurrency for at least nine months, four to nine months. I said for at least four to nine months. At the time that that happened, people had a hard time believing me but we can now see what happened. Also, the stock market in 2022, January, I, I, I will show you some, some proof of uh, the report. I write it in my report. I said, the market is about to crash. Market is about to crash. Get out, get out, get out. It's all because, not because I had a hunch, not because I had a crystal ball, but I could see the warning signs. And that's what learning about technical analysis is all about. And I'm gonna show you that warning sign that shows you when it's at the bottom, ready to head back up. Uh, other notable calls that I that I that I made was the top of the pandemic of 2020, the bottom of the pandemic in 2020, and so on, and so forth. Okay. Um, so um, Anna, if you don't mind helping me with Cena again, uh, Cena is saying that they can't hear, but they see my chart. Uh, this is the second computer that they use, and they still have an issue with it. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Cena, um, but I appreciate you if you can help me with that. So I have this report um, that I write every single week. And you can see right here, this is when we uh, told people about the about the pandemic, right? Now, at the time, we didn't know it was a pandemic. But here's some things that I wanted to highlight in that report. You'll see the date right here says January 24, 2020. So in January of 2020, we started telling people, hey, something bad is about to happen to the stock market. And so you can see that right there. And part of what I wrote in there where I said, um, we need to be ready for a slowdown at best, okay, uh, or reversal at worst. The writing is already on the wall. It is time to take profits, exit your positions, okay? The market is warning us to take heed. This is what I wrote about on that weekend saying that, hey, something bad is about to happen to the market. And if you go look at the chart, you'll see that the market dropped in. 
And then here's the report, the same report uh, a couple of months later, where again, in that report, I said, wait a second, uh, the question a lot of people have it is, have we found a bottom or is this just a relief rally? And I said, just like the bearish signs warned us of a bearish drop, this time the market is communicating, it is time to do what? Cover all our short positions, exit all your short positions and get ready for a rally. And again, if you go back, you'll see 2022, March of 2022 is when we hit the bottom. And I wrote about that. You can see this right here. This is the report, March 27th, 20, uh, March 27th to March 29th. That was that weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Over that weekend, I wrote that report saying the market is ready to head back higher. How did I know these things? Notice what I didn't write in my reports is like, maybe it can go up, maybe it's not. I said, no, no, no. it is ready to go up. Get ready. This is about to happen. And I've done this multiple, multiple times. Here's the Bitcoin crash that I was talking about. And again, this is the report you see right here in January of 2022. Okay, the first weekend in January 2022, I said, the more we zoom out, the clearer it is becoming that Bitcoin is displaying major topping pattern. This is going to look ugly. Now, how is it that I could see what was about to happen to cryptocurrency in, in January 2022? January 2022. Most people at that time was like, oh no, everything is going to, if you recall, they were saying crypto was going to go to $100,000. And I'm writing a report on January 2022 saying major topping pattern is going to look ugly. This is not looking good. And it says chances are very high that Bitcoin is going to suffer for the next four to nine months. Okay. And at that time, people were saying, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, look at this YouTube video. These people are saying it's going to go up. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody just bought this. Somebody just did that. And I'm telling them there's something on the charts that's saying something bad is going to happen. That was in January, right? And I remember literally after a while, I stopped arguing with people. I said, you know, believe what you want to believe, but I can see things on the chart. And notice what happened in 2022. Okay. Cryptocurrency suffered a lot of them, you know. So much so that a lot of people don't even want to trade cryptocurrencies anymore. Um, because I knew how big the warning sign was, I that's why I usually don't go out and record a video on YouTube and stuff like that. But on that day, I was like, you know, people are not going to believe what I'm about to say. And and the only reason why I did is because so many people were, I mean, I saw people that were, you know, selling their, uh, uh, mortgaging their house, um, doing refinance and taking out all the equity on their homes and put it into cryptocurrencies. You know, I saw people literally taking their savings and doing and put it into cryptos. I said, guys, you're about to make one of the biggest mistakes. This is not the time to do that. And needless to say, look at what's happened. And then now people come back. So nobody saw this. Nobody knew it was going to happen. And I'm just like, no, there's a way to see these things. If you learn how to read the charts properly, you can see these things. A couple more. This is the top on January 2020 where I wrote in the right side report. So you'll see about two weeks later, uh, actually a week later after I talked about cryptocurrencies uh, on January 14, 2022, then I started writing about the fact that the bear market is going to happen in the stock market itself. And then you saw a drop. Uh, what I don't have is, I should have put that in here, was the report that I wrote in November when I said the market has hit bottom, it's time to start rallying. OK, uh, so what is this candlestick signals? Now, some people, a lot of people actually believe that it's a bullish engulfing pattern. And the answer is, no, it's not. It's actually not a bullish engulfing pattern. OK, what this pattern is, is something we call the right side candle. Now, the difference between the right side candle and a bullish engulfing pattern is a bullish engulfing pattern starts at the top. You see the green is at the top and it, and it covers the top of this red right here. Let me use my black marker here. So the top over here engulfs the top and then the bottom would have been all the way down here. The green would go all the way down here. So that's why they call it engulfing. So it engulfs, it would engulf this whole red candle to the left. But that's not what this is doing. You'll notice that it takes out the top, but it doesn't take out the bottom. So that's why, Jerry, this is not a 
bullish engulfing pattern. Instead, it's something that we call the right side candle. And, and quite frankly, the only reason why we even call it the right side, because at the time when I first discovered this, again, I had no idea what it was. I just kept on seeing it. I was like, wow. When I was doing my studies of market bottoms, I say, hey, what are the patterns that usually occurs when the market is ready to go higher? And I started noticing, no problem, I got you there, Jerry. I saw the same pattern over and over and over, and I say, hmm. And at the time, like I said, this was back in 2016. I was like, what pattern is this? I couldn't find anything on it. And um, so I, I called my, my 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 business partner at the time. His name was Solomon. I say, Solomon, I said, um, I I don't know what this pattern is, but do you know what this is? He said, he's never seen it before. And I said, but every, I said, look, look at this, man. Look at how many times the market hits the bottom. This pattern keeps on showing up. I was like, what's going on here? It didn't show up in the past, but recently it started showing up. And I said, what is this? And someone said, you know what? Why don't you come up with your own name and come up with some parameters around it? And then just go with that. Don't get stuck on, you got to figure out what it was. And I said, oh, okay, there's a reason why your name is Solomon. Because anybody who knows the story in the Bible about Solomon, the wisest king and everything, I said, man, thank you for that wisdom. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so that's what I did, okay? And and you can use this on any time frame, Otto, any time frame. Does that make sense? Any time frame, any time frame. The, the one thing I would say, Otto, is that the higher the time frame, the more consistent it is. Does that make sense? So if you are a type of person that trades in one minute, it'll still work. But if you trade it five minutes, it's even better. And if you trade it five minutes, it will work. But if you trade it 15 minutes, it's even better. Right? And, and you'll see when I when I start showing you examples, because again, it's just, just, just trust me on that, all right? So when Solomon said, come up with your rules, here are the rules that I came up and I still use till today to help me see when the market is bottomed, Help me get into good stocks when they register to rally. I don't buy the dips, okay? Please don't ever buy the dips again. And next time you see somebody say, buy the dip, ask yourself, does it have a right side candle? All right? So here are the things that I need to see in order for me to say, yes, this is bottom, this is ready to start heading back up, and I'm ready to trade this. Number one, obviously, I want to see a right side candle. And in order to tell if you're dealing with a right side candle, it's very simple. You have two candles. And this is why I put it right here, step by step. Number one, there must be a green and red color. Now, if you don't have green and red, and you use maybe black and white, or you use blue and white, or whatever colors you use, the idea is that you have two opposing colors. One tells you it's bullish, one tells you it's bearish. The bullish one stays on the right side. So this is the bullish one right here. Okay, that's what I use for green. Green to me means that you're making money. That's why I color it green. Red means that you're losing money. So that's why I call it red. So uh, the red is on the left and the green on the right. So again, if you're if you're using black and white, and let's say white is telling you it's going up and black is telling you it's going down, just make sure that you know the white is on the right, the black is on the left. So whatever color you use, the bullish one, the one that tells you it's going up needs to be on the right, and the one that tells you it's going down needs to be on the left. So that's what this is right here. So far, so good. Very simple. You have something like that, you know that okay, you're on the right track. And the reason why is because if I see people say, oh, I see two green candles, that must be a right side. No, it's not. Okay. Or two red candles. No, it's not. It has to be two opposing colors. Number three, the top of the green must be above the top of the red. Now, in this case, the top, I don't include these wicks or these shadows or these tails. I don't include them in there. So I'm going to take that out right now. You don't really need that. Okay. The, when I say the top, I'm talking about the body of the candle. That's what I'm referring to. So when I say the top, this is the top of the red. This is where this line is. That's the top of the red. So if you see right here, the top of the green must be above the top of the red. Okay. And that's what we want to see. The top of the green must be above the top of the red. So far, so good. Number four, the bottom of the green must also be above the bottom of the red. So if you look right here, this is the bottom of the green. If we look in this right here, again, we're not looking at the wicks, we're just looking at the body. The bottom of this green has to be above the bottom of red. Because if it's below the bottom of the red, then it becomes an engulfing candle. Does that make sense? And so this is why it's it's almost like an engulfing candle that was shifted a little bit up, shifted higher, give it a little, it's almost like as if it gave it a little boost 
so that engulfing pattern shifted up. And so now the top of the green is higher and the bottom of the green is also higher. Ladies and gentlemen, if you see that candle after the market has been dropping, there's a very huge chance that that stock is getting ready to reverse. That makes sense? Take a screenshot of this, write this down if you have to. Please understand this. This is what we consider to be a right side. So when people say buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, they'll buy on the red candle. I don't buy on the red candle. I wait till I see a right side candle. Okay. Now, once I see a right side candle, that's the first part. That's the exciting part. Okay, now we see a right side candle. But when I started doing this, I realized that there were some that would appear and there will be false signals. Okay, uh, they will show up and what ends up happening is the market still keeps on going back down. Okay, um, so that's where I said, okay, and now I want to fine tune this so I'm not getting involved in the false ones. I want to see the ones that are really going to take off as opposed to the ones that are not going to take off. So kind of answering Otto's question, which he asked, uh, Otto asked, you buy when the, when the green candle is finished, right? Not necessarily. I'm going to show you this. We have five more, four more steps before I can decide whether I'm going to be buying dish, okay? So number five is ignore all wicks. So that's, that's I already said that, we ignore them. Okay, so don't worry about the wicks. Some people get focused on the wicks and everything. So ignore the wicks. Number six, seven, and eight, this is where, this is how I can tell when it's okay for me to buy. Number six, it says draw a horizontal line at the top of the green candle. Now, whether it was this top right here or you wanna use the wick, in this case, that's fine. When I say ignore the wicks, it's just to identify the right side candle. Once we have identified that, yes, this is a this is truly a right side candle, then the thing is number six right here, draw a horizontal line at the top of the green candle. Now, I can draw a line at the top of the body or I can draw a line at the top of the wick, okay? So, but the most important one is the one on the body, this body right here. Because if I had a wick that was so long like this, I probably won't worry about the wick. But in a situation like this where it's so short, that the wick is so short, then I don't mind using both lines. And I'll say, okay, I'm going to form some type of a range. Does that make sense? And I'll just use this as a range. But if it's one of those where, again, this green line was all the way up here, and then I have to draw one down there and one up here, and it makes this bigger range, I'm not interested in that. So this is where, again, when we say, at the top of the green candle, we're referring to the body of the green candle. That's what we're referring to. But again, if you have a short wick that you wanna use and make it into a range, that's fine. Otherwise, you don't need the wick. Make sense? So that's the first thing I do once I identify a right side candle. I get excited, I say, yes. Okay, so all these people are saying, bind a dip, bind a dip, bind a dip. Once I see a right side candle, I say, okay, yes, but, it's not time to buy yet. It's almost like being in a war, right? Like back in the movies when you see those wars, like uh, the medieval type of medieval ages type of war, where the 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 enemy's charging and these guys are there in their castle at the top of the the the, the, the fort right there, and and the, and they tell the archers archers, and the archers pull their bow and arrow, and it's a hold, and you see these people galloping with their horses. They're coming closer and closer, and it says hold, and they're coming closer and closer and closer, right? And then they say fire, and then you see all the arrows go out in the air, right? This to me is number six is archers. Draw your weapon, you know, say draw your draw your arrows, draw your draw your bows and all that stuff, right? But you gotta hold. Don't release it yet. Don't fire yet. Don't start buying yet. You just you just getting ready is what that is. Number seven is when we fire. And in order to do that, what I want to see is we wait for the next candle and only buy if price is above that horizontal line that we drew here. That makes sense. And again, that horizontal line could be down here. But once price closes the next candle, so it could be trading a one minute chart. If this is a one minute chart right here, if this is one minute, you wait one more minute and wait to see a green candle that closes above this level here. Okay. If it's a five minute, you wait the next five minutes. If it's a daily chart, you literally wait to the next day. And I promise you, even if it's the monthly chart, you wait until the next month. 
this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to prevent you from getting into the false signals. Confirmation, exactly. That's exactly what we're looking for. We want confirmation. Make sense? So the confirmation is number seven. And that means that we have to wait to price closes above it. And if you see number eight, I put this there and I put it in red because this is so, so important. Never buy. Even if price closes above this horizontal line, never buy, never buy if it is a red candle. It's one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make. It's buying on a red candle. I just don't buy on red candles. Okay? Never buy on a red candle. So if, ladies and gentlemen, you follow these eight steps, you would identify right side candle and you want to make sure that this is happening after the price has dropped. That's what you want to see. You want to make sure price has dropped, then you see this candle. Once that happens, you know you have a right side candle. A few more things that I want to share before we go to the charts. One of the things I realized is that every candlestick signals are not the same. They're not created equal. They, they, you can't trade them the same. Uh, one of the biggest things I learned is that every candlestick has a unique quality, something about that candlestick that others don't have. Most people just group them all together. Oh, if it's a green candle, it's bullish. I say, ah, you're making a big mistake. That means you don't really understand candlesticks like you should. Okay, oh, they're all red candle and it's all bearish signal, so they must be bearish. It's like, yeah. There's a little bit more information that each candlestick has that most people are not aware of, okay? And now I don't even know anybody that teaches those things. It's just what I observed after studying and studying and studying candlesticks for so long, right? And so for instance, on the right side candle, one of the unique qualities that the right side candle has that I have not seen any other candlestick have is this, that when a right side candle appears, when it appears, it has this unique quality of letting you know a strong bullish trend is about to begin and there's a very high chance that the next swing high is going to be taken out. What I mean by that, and this is one that I don't know any other candlestick that, that, that kind of gives you that much you know, uh, confidence that that's going to happen. If a stock is going down, right, it goes down, higher highs, higher lows, right, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And then all of a sudden you see a right side candle here. One of the unique things, once we go through the eight steps, we get the confirmation and everything that we need. One of the unique things that the right side candle does based on this is it lets us know, wait, you're going to have a strong trend, but see that swing high, which is this right here. You know, we had a high over here. This is another high here. This is another high. You know, this is a low, this is a low, this is a low. So higher high, uh, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So here's another low here. When the right side candle appears, nine times out of 10, 9.5, 9.9% of the times when that appears, it's going to take out this high. And it's the only candlestick that I know that has that much, you know, assurance that it's going to take out that high. You follow the rules that I'm telling you about, and it's like, wow. And this just changes a lot of things because when people want to trade and they say, oh, I'm buying this at the bottom, okay? So maybe you're buying this at the bottom here. But rather than thinking, oh, it's gonna go all the way up to the moon and beyond, I'm like, I'm not looking for this thing to go to the moon and beyond. However, what I do know is because this right side candle appeared at this bottom here, then I know it's going to come to this level here. And that makes a huge difference because me knowing that it's gonna to get to this point, I can make a lot of decisions. I can see how much money I'm going to make. I can see whether I like that, I don't like it, all kinds of stuff that I can see based off of that. So it's very, very important that we understand that a right side candle, this is why I love it. I don't just buy the dips. I wait for that right side candle make sure that things are ready to turn around. Last but not least, before we go to the charts, I'll show you this. This is the bearish right side candle. It's, it does the exact same thing for the bearish side. The only difference is you read this, it must be red and green colors, just like we said, but now the green is on the left, this is the left, and the red on the right. This is the right right here. 
That's the only difference now. Well, not only difference, but the top of the red is below the top of the green. So this is the top of the red, and you can see that it's below the top of the green. I didn't even include the wicks in this case so that we don't confuse people. I said the bottom of the red must be below the bottom of the green. This is the bottom of the red, and you can see it's below the bottom of the green. Ignore the wicks, like as we said. Draw a horizontal line at the bottom of the red candle. So this is where you would draw your line, bottom of the red candle. For confirmation, wait for the next five candles and only short if price closes below the bottom line. Okay, never short if the confirmation is a green candle. And again, when price is heading higher and I see this pattern show up, I know that it's gonna come drop in to this level down here. So far, so good. A lot of information, but if you understand this, you take screenshots of this, no worries. Now let's see how we can apply this in real life, okay? I'm gonna take you here to the charts and let's see. So here's the S&P 500. I wanna take you back to the very first time I actually traded this. And what we'll do is I'll take you back to when I first started, the very first time I traded this was just in 2016. I'll never forget that. And then we'll come to something that's literally happening right now and looking at stocks that are happening right now. Okay, so here's the S&P 500 back in 2016. 2015 was a very choppy market. January came in 2016, market started dropping. You can see this right here. Market was dropping, 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 right? As the price kept on dropping, everything was going down. You'll notice that there was no right side candle. And this is why I say you don't just buy the dip. Anybody who bought on the red because we had a down day and bought here was losing money there. And see how it was just kept on going down, 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 down. But here's what I want you guys to see. Notice what happened when it attempted to rally, came back down again, and then notice, you guys see this right here? Let me let me see if I can circle this. Can you guys see what happens here? Right there. Boom. What is that? That is a right side candle. Because if you remember, rule number one, we want to have two opposing colors, green and red. Check. Number two, we want to make sure that the green is on the right, the red is on the left. Check. Number three, the top of the green is higher than the top of the red. Check. Number four, the bottom of the green is higher than the bottom of the red. Check, okay? So this is not, oh, I just have this insight. I'm saying following rules that can help us see what's going on, okay? Number five, what does number five say? Ignore all the wicks, so we don't care about the wicks. So I don't care about this section down here. Does that make sense? Number six, this is kind of going back to what I was telling you, Otto. Number six, what does number six tell us? This is draw your horizontal line. This is where you draw your bow and arrow. This is like archers, get ready. So what I'm gonna do here is where do we draw it? We draw it at the top of that line right there. Now we have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow. Zero clue what's gonna happen tomorrow. This is what I'm seeing. I say, like, wow, we have a right side candle now. Okay, we draw our line. And then number seven says what? It says, wait for the next candle and up to the next five, you can wait up to five candles after that. This is a daily chart, so I need to wait till the next day. I used to have this issue of like, oh, if I wait till the next day, I'm gonna miss out. I'm gonna miss out, I'm gonna miss out. I was like, no, okay? Wait till the next day and see if we do what? Close above this line. If we close above the horizontal line, that's number seven, then we're ready to go, okay? Again, we can see that when we go here. That's what we said here. Draw a horizontal line at the top of the green candle, wait for the next candle and only buy if price is above the horizontal uh, line and never buy if it's a red candle. So here we are now, let's see what happens the next day. Boom, okay, is it time to buy? Yes, it is time to buy. One of the things we do know, about a right side candle is that it would take out the previous swing high. So if I look back here, I can say price came down, went up, came down, went up, came down, went up, came down, went up, came down, right? So what does that tell me now? Am I shooting for this price up here or am I shooting for this price over here? This is my initial target. Does that make sense? And so this is where now I say, if I buy this stock at 1900 and it can go to 1960, I'll make $60 on 1900 bucks. Is that good enough for me? 
Can I use options to help me do that? Can I use your stocks? Can I use margin? Whatever it is that you try to use. But the one thing I do know, and I say this all the time, we don't guess when it comes to the stock market. We don't hope when it comes to the stock market. We don't wish. We don't have a feeling. I hear people, oh, I have a feeling the stock is going to do this. I don't believe in that. I believe in, it's almost like a scientist. I believe in data. What does the data tell us? And what is... What is the probability that it's going to do? Has it worked before in the past? If the answer is yes, then let's do it again, okay? And at this point, we say, hey, if this happens here, my goal is that it's going to get to 190, okay? Uh, no, I'm sorry, not 190, uh, 1,900, you know, roughly 1,960. Let's call it 1,940 or 1,950, somewhere between there. That's where we go. And so, now, at this point, I'm ready to buy. And then we just let the trade work itself out. So let me draw this line over here. You see right there, that's the line that we're shooting for. Notice how price was coming back. People start panicking and everything. But the one thing I know is what? That we are dealing with a right side that should make it to the top. Okay, what ended up happening was this was the bottom in February 2020, uh, February 2016. And this thing, literally, this was the all time high of here. And sometimes that would actually happen too, where once the right side kind of appears, you start seeing things go all the way back up to new all time highs. Ladies and gentlemen, boom, just like that. Okay, uh, Dan is saying, hey, look at October. Why are some of them not considered right side candles? Does it have to do with rising or falling slope? Um, let me give me let me finish this presentation and then I'll I don't mind going back to that. So just remind me before we before we end. Okay, Dan, uh, I promise you I'll answer you. I'll, I'll take a look at it now. I'll, I'll take a look at that and see. But the reason why I don't want to say that now is because maybe in the other examples that I give you, you'll see the answer to that. Okay, but again, if we don't do it by the time I'm done, just remind me and I'll, I'll, I'll go take a look at that and answer that for you, okay? All right, here's another example. Um, this was um, 2016 as well. You would notice that price was coming down. This is what we wanna see. That's one of the precursors is that price has to be coming down. Price was coming down. You'll see that price was coming down over here. We had a right side candle take place right there. You draw your line over here. Next candle was a red candle, so you won't be buying. But the next candle was a green, and notice what it did. It closed above here. Idea is that it's going to take out the previous high. Boom, it did that. So here we are now, and guess what we have right here? Another right side candle. Green on the left, uh, green on the right, red on the left, check. Top of the green, above the top of the red, check. Bottom of the green, above the bottom of the red, check. Ignore the wicks, check. Draw your horizontal lines. So we go over here and we draw a horizontal line right there. So this is what I mean where see how this wick is so long? I would just ignore that. That's not an issue. Now, let's, let's assume that this was a right side candle. If this was a right side candle, okay, yeah, I'll probably put my line over there, okay? Maybe draw a zone and call it these two right here. But in this case, you know, with this one being so far up here, no, I'm not going to worry about this. So I'm just using it at the body. And so I remember this because this was kind of getting close to Brexit in 2016. So I saw this and that week they were supposed to make an announcement about Brexit. If you guys recall Brexit back in 2016. And I said, okay. So I saw this. I was like, wait a second. Why is the market giving us a right side candle before the Brexit announcement? They must know something. So I started, you know, looking at this. I said, okay, let's wait and see. The next day, boom. We get the buy. I said, great. So I draw my line up here. I said, it's time to go in and start buying. So we start buying. You know, Brexit is coming soon. And then, you know, things are going well. And I say, yeah, you know, um, and, and this was like the day before Brexit. And everybody's like, yes. Um, and I'm looking at this as like, without a question, it's going to go higher. Brexit is going to work for the market. Whatever the result is, it's going to work because obviously everything that I see here shows that it's ready to go higher. We're so close to hitting the top, it's going to make it. And then I literally remember it was that night they came out. Uh, I was in America in Florida. I'm listening to the Brexit announcement. It comes out. They saying that England wanted to exit uh, the European Union. Blah, well, not England, but UK wanted uh, Great Britain wanted to exit. You know the story. Um, long story short, market started tanking overnight. Futures market was down big. 
wasn't the news the market was prepared to hear. The next morning, this happens, boom. And I'm looking at this, I was like, oh, come on, right? Uh, Pablo is saying, so the left candle not necessarily has to be a top or bottom. No, the left candle, no. The left candle, no. What we're doing is we're using the green candle, which is the one on the right, to kind of help us determine that, yes, a reversal is beginning to take place. Okay, that's the whole idea behind it, because we can have a red candle, not knowing what's going to happen the next day, red candle, red candle, red candle. But I need to know that, yes, the reversal is taking place, and that's what happens. And then we wait for that confirmation and then see what happens. Okay, but in this case, things were doing well. We were so close to getting there. I knew Brexit was coming out. Boom, market drops. Now, truth be told, I actually went in when the market started dropping uh, futures um, overnight. I went in and I took some stops out of my trade because I knew the morning was going to be down big. I knew I was going to be losing a lot of money. Right. So I took out all my stops and said, let's see what happens. I won't recommend that to anybody, but that's what I did that day. So after the market ended the next day, I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't want to look at my portfolio. I mean, I'm losing so much money. I said, you've got to be kidding me. So I'm trying to decide, should I do something? Should I not? I said, okay, let's wait and see what happens the next day. Boom, market drops even more. And I'm saying to myself, oh, I need to go in and use and get out of this. How do we use volume? Um, believe it or not, we don't use volume for this. We don't use volume for this. Now, I typically have stops auto, but because of how big the drop happened overnight, I knew that all my stops are going to be stopped down at the morning. And so my hope was, this is back when I used to hope and wish, and this is why I say we don't hope, we don't wish, and all that stuff. My hope was maybe it was a knee-jerk reaction. Maybe, you know, you've seen days where the market drops big pre-market, and then by the time the market opens up, it rallies back up. I was hoping that was what was going to happen. Right. That's what I was hoping for. So that's why I took out my stops. Cause I was like, if I don't take out my stops, as soon as the US market opens, I'm gonna lose all this money. Like I'm gonna get stopped out of everything. So I said, I don't want to get stopped out just yet. Maybe we'll have a bounce back. Maybe it's a dead cat bounce and all that stuff. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. What ended up happening was I got punished. And then the next day, now I'm paralyzed. And the next day it got worse. And I'm sitting there, I was like, oh, you know, and then I see this happen, okay? I see this happen. And I was gonna go in and like start selling. I said, man, I gotta take this loss again. Man, doggone it. And then I see this and I said, wait a minute. Uh, that's a right side candle. Uh, right side candle usually shows up when the market bottoms out. Um, is it possible that it's trying to rally back up? That's impossible, right? Because everything in the media was saying that here comes the end of the world, everything in the media. I was like, all right. So I'm like crossing my fingers, please, please, please come back up. And it's like, please reward me for not selling my shorts, right? Again, I don't recommend that, but that's literally what happened to me then. So what do we do here? Well, what we do is we come over here, we draw a line, just like that, boom. And I'm crossing my fingers, oh, please, 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 you know, confirm, because it could be a false signal. How would I know if it's a false signal if it doesn't confirm? Next day comes, I see this. I was like, oh, no way. I said, it's confirmed. And so where am I expecting it to go? I'm expecting it to get to this level here. I said, you know what? If I can just recover the money that I make, because technically I bought it over here. This is where I bought it right here. I bought it on this candle right here. So it was after this close. I said, so if I can get it to get back up here, I'll recoup my money back. I'll be happy. And what ended up happening? Boom, 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 boom did it not make it to that level. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what I mean by when I say one unique character about the right side candle that I don't know any other candlestick have is that there's a very high chance the swing high is going to be taken out. Just knowing that information alone, you could have even if you waited to the end of the day and bought it here at 2070 and know that it's going to 2110, how can that help you with your trading going forward? Hmm? I'm going to fast forward now that we understand how this works, just so we can see. This is October of 2018. Uh, if you guys recall, when Donald Trump was going with uh, tariff wars with China, long story short, 
It started in October, market started dropping, 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 okay? We get down here, okay? We get down here, market is dropping. Everybody's thinking, yes, they don't like Donald Trump. He's ruining the economy, blah, 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 blah. They're saying whatever they wanna say and the market is dropping. Christmas, the day before Christmas, this is Christmas Eve right here, December 24. I'll never forget that because I was watching this. I said, man, everybody was waiting for the Santa Claus rally. Santa Claus rally wasn't showing up, right? Christmas Eve, this happens. Christmas Day, market is closed. Day after Christmas, Boxing Day, for those who might be in Europe and England and Africa that understand Boxing Day, you know what I mean. Boxing Day comes and then this happens. And I'm seeing this, I'm like, no way. You've got to be kidding me. You can't tell me the market is just bottomed. No way, that is a right side candle. Now at that time, nobody in the media was trying to talk about the market on a, it's like, hey, you know, fade the rally is what they were saying. Fade the rally, fade the rally. And I'm saying, fade the rally? Are you serious? Like, do you realize what this is? But I said, before I get so excited, let me go through my rules. So let's go through the rules together. Green and red, check. Green on the right, red on the left, check. Uh, top of the green, higher than top of the red, check. Bottom of the green, higher than the bottom of the red, check. Ignore the wicks, check. Draw your horizontal line. Okay, let's do that now. Let's go over here, we draw our horizontal line. Guys, we don't guess, this is not guessing. This is not guessing, hoping, wishing, anything, right? And this is one of the things I like about technical analysis and following a pattern, a proven pattern, is that anybody can use, this is not me having an insight that you don't have. It's the same thing every single time. I draw my line. And the reason why I say same thing every single time, because I hear people say this all the time, oh, this time is different. And I say, well, if it's the same pattern, this pattern shows up every time a bottom shows up. And people say, well, no, it's different this time. You know, um, the world is different. I'm like, it's the same pattern. All right, only thing we need to do now is get a confirmation. Boom, there's our confirmation. So at this point, we're saying, we expect price to do what? Come to the swing high. Some people might choose this level right here as a previous swing high. No problem. Either one works for me because guess what happens? Market does what? Takes out the high. Can you imagine that? Not because we're guessing, hoping, or wishing, but I always tell people, we see what the market is trying to communicate. Does that make sense? And let's, just so we don't forget, this was the all-time highs. And guess what happened? Boom, takes out the all-time high. Simply because it's a right side candle, okay? So um, Dan had asked this question. Dan has said, October, let's go here to October. Where's October? This is October right here. Dan is saying, here is October, okay? And, <clears throat> He said, October, I'm not sure which one he's referring to. Maybe this one right here, which was a right side that failed. This was a right side. It went up, didn't really you know, go through. Why did this fail? Okay, why does this fail? And this is where, when you come to my six week, uh, no, no, I'm not six week, my, uh, I have this workshop coming up on, on uh, Thursday in two days. Uh, I'll show you one indicator that we use to help us see whether even if we get the confirmation, whether it's going to work or not, okay? That I promise you, you will see that, okay? So hopefully that answers your question. But when we look at all this and we say, what is this market trying to do now? It's making its way back up is what we see. Here's the right side candle, the most recent right side candle that we had here. Here was the high right here. Guess what it's doing? Working its way back up there. And I'll show you how to manage your trade along the way so you can see how to do this. Let me fast forward a little bit more. Here are some stocks recently that have done this. You'll see that this stock had a right side candle here. You guys see this? That's a right side candle there. If we draw our lines over there, let me draw this line very quickly. We draw this line here. Notice what happened. It closed above that line. You guys see this? It closed above the line here. But what ended up happening, it was a red candle. Remember what I said, never buy on a red candle. We come back again and guess what we have? Another right side candle, right? So we just have to be patient and wait to see 
Now, notice the difference between this right side candle here with a red candle and this right side candle here with a green candle. Doji's on both of them. I get it. But one was green, one was red. Isn't that what rule number eight tells us to do? What do I expect? This was recent, ladies and gentlemen. This was January 23rd. This was last week. What do I expect this to do? Make it to this level up here. That's where I expect it to go. Here's what we got. Market is doing this. And here's where we are today. Coincidence? I don't think so. Here's another one. Stock has been going down, right? We had a right side candle over here. Didn't confirm. Had another right side candle here. Didn't confirm. Had another right side candle here. And it said, all right, let's see what happens. What do we do? We draw a line right there at the top. See what happens the next day. Didn't confirm. How many days did we get to get a confirmation? It said five candles. That was candle number one. No confirmation. Candle number two. We get a confirmation. Wait a second. If that's the case, where do we expect this to go? We go back to the next swing high, which is somewhere around here. Now think about this, ladies and gentlemen. If you saw this when this happened at ten dollars, let's just call it ten dollars. You look up here, you see that it's eleven dollars. That's a ten percent move on the stock that you can see even before you jump in. So now the only question is, can we make it happen? And this is where we are today even higher. Not only did it make it above that, it pulled back down, showed another right side candle, and then it's been going higher. That's El Pollo Loco, the restaurant chain. Here's this company, Clear Secure. Same thing. Almost like what I remember during the Brexit situation, right? Right side candle there. Here's the top. Here's another level, but this is the top. If we got into the stock at 21, my expectation is that it should re I mean, not 21, $28. My expectation is that it should reach $38, $31. If I know these things ahead of time, how can I use this information to help me with my trading? Is it even possible? Here's what happened to the stock. Here's where we are today. All from last week, ladies and gentlemen, here's another stock. Same scenario. Right side candle right there. I'm going to go ahead and put my levels right there. Can we make that level? That's all we're trying to figure out now. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. In three candles already there. Here's where we are today. Not coincidence. I like to trade the weeklies, dailies, and monthlies, but again, you can use this on any time frame. Okay. Here's here's where we are right here on the another weekly chart this is a weekly chart right here right side candle that means that we can either look at this level here or we can look at this level over here one of the two if you buy this, this right here we just need a confirmation we get the confirmation by seeing that we close above that now it's just like can we go to 960 or maybe even ten dollars what ends up happening is the stock is here today Okay. Is the entry on the close of the confirmation bar? That's correct. That's correct. You want to wait to the close of that confirmation bar. Here's uh, one that we did. This is something that we did on the monthly time frame because, again, I do invest on monthly charts as well. We saw this. This is uh, United Rentals. We saw this right side candle on the monthly time frame. We said, okay, good. We have a monthly time frame. And then we had this confirmation on the monthly, ladies and gentlemen. This is on the monthly right here. You can see that again. I can come over here, draw my lines right there. This is my line right there. Okay. In November, we close above this. We start telling people, hey, here's a stock that is ready to go to all time highs. This is why part of even what I was telling people in November, I said, market is bottom, market is bottom. We're going to new all time highs. Right. And then this happened, and this is where the stock is today. That's on the monthly time frame. Right now, I'm in Starbucks. Okay. And part of the reason why I'm in Starbucks, because again, I saw this on Starbucks. Does this work for ETFs? Yes, it does. It works for ETFs as well. Matter of fact, I love seeing this on ETFs. You know why, Steve? The reason why I love seeing this on ETFs is because if I see this on an ETF, what does that tell me? That tells me a bunch of stocks that makes up that ETF is doing the same thing too. And so I could either trade the ETF or go find stocks in that ETF that are doing the same thing too. 
And that just, I mean, now I can, and, and the reason why I like to trade the stocks personally is because sometimes when you trade the stocks, as opposed to the ETF, you make more money on the stocks, okay? But anyways, here's we go. We will come over here, draw our line, and I'm running out of time because I told you guys I'll give you an hour. Notice what happened, no confirmation, no confirmation. Then, just like that, we have confirmation. This is in October, boom, November, December, January. This is where we are right now. What is this telling me? This is telling me that this stock is ready to go higher. So again, I hope this helps you guys. Let me do this. I'm going to invite you guys to this. Let me just wrap this up because I do want to leave us here. This is my uh, report back in December when I was telling people buy Starbucks. Now you can see why I was telling people buy Starbucks. Now you'll see that December 2nd, this is like right after the month of November ended is when I wrote about this. So even though it said December 2nd, that was literally after November 30th, right? So that weekend I said, it's time to buy Starbucks. I know people are talking about recession and uh, inflation and all this stuff, but I'm saying something is happening in Starbucks. Get ready for this thing to go to all time highs. Now you understand why I said that, okay? Then in January, I wrote again in my right side report. I said, look, we got signals after signals telling us it's time to buy. I said, and it also pays dividends. Anybody, any investor, I said, investors who are looking for stocks that can appreciate in value as well as pay dividends should consider investing in Starbucks as soon as possible. Okay. And that's what I did. All right. So um, you might have questions. Please let me know what questions you have. But in the meantime, here's what I want to do I want to invite you to my modern day candlestick workshop. If you felt like you learned something here, you saw something here, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This Thursday, 7.30 p.m. live, I'm going to be there and I'm going to go over not just the right side, but I'm going to go over two other candlesticks that you might not have heard of before. Okay, maybe you did, maybe you haven't. I'm also going to introduce the indicators that I use. Like I said, when Dan asked that question, hey, how is it that this one worked and this one did not work? I had those same questions too because I saw some examples and every time it was one of those things that every time I saw one that did not work, my thing would be, hey, what can we do to make it even work off better, right? And so I started incorporating indicators. I didn't show you any indicators today, right? I didn't show you any indicators today, but when you come to this workshop on Thursday night, you will see the indicators that I use to kind of help boost this even better. You will learn how to find it. How do you find these stocks? that have these right side candles on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. I'm gonna share the two other candlesticks that are just as powerful, just as powerful, but they have a different unique quality that you need to be aware of uh, that we're gonna talk about. And then a step-by-step -step on how to tell when it's time to take your profits, exit the trade. And what about trading options? I didn't even talk about options. What type of options do you trade? What are the safest ones to invest? What type of option uh, uh, expiration date do you pick? What strikes are you gonna be looking at? How can you determine what you can make? Uh, should you be trading uh, uh, spreads or should you be selling? Uh, all that kind of stuff is what we're gonna talk about on Thursday evening when we go into this, okay? Uh, here's um, a testimonial from a guy who said, look, I've watched your videos on how to trade. I've attended many videos on how to understand candlesticks and everything, but I never understood or grasped the concept of when I should get out of a trade until now. Thank you so much. Um, if you already know about candlesticks, then here's what I'm going to do for you as well. There's only seven, seven candlesticks that I trade ever. Okay. And when you sign up for this Thursday, I'm going to give you all those seven. The other two I'm going to talk about in here uh, on Thursday night but I'm gonna give you all seven. These are my seven. I, I, when, I, when I say I do not trade unless these seven candlesticks appear, I really, really mean that. These are my top seven candlesticks. I don't even have to worry about anything else. They work on stocks, futures, cryptocurrencies, Forex, whatever it is, but those seven are the only ones that I use and how all each and every one of them, all the unique qualities of each and every one of those seven. So you know and you understand there's no guessing when it comes to the stock market, okay? So we'll see how to profile them. Uh, we'll see which one works best with which stocks, uh, how to use the indicators to help you with each and every one of these stocks. Those are the kind of things that we do. We'll also identify the right setups, tell the difference between the fake ones from the real ones. I kind of showed you a little bit about that today. Uh, when is the best conditions to use candlestick signals? Because that's something a lot of people are not aware of. It's like, there are times when you don't even want to bother with candlestick signals. I'm going to show you how to see that 
when to trade with stops, when not to trade with stop, how to plan your trades better, tell, simplest way to tell when something has gone wrong, how to place your trade, lose less, win more, okay? The right side workshop is 647 by itself. The PDF of this candlestick, uh, candlestick chart, uh, cheat sheet that I usually give out, I always give it out for $99. For you guys today, that's not the case. I'm gonna give it to you guys for a whole lot less, okay? This is what one person said, I study candlesticks, but your teaching really put rhyme to reason. I can tell that you are this. One last thing I'm gonna also add for those who take action today and today, I'm gonna give you access to my analysis room. We do this every Monday night, every Monday night for one month. You can come in there. If you decide to pay for it uh, separately, it'll be $367. Uh, you also get access to my ISR report, which I charge $197 per month for that because there's some really, really good stuff in there. We don't guess, we don't hope, we don't wish. We see things as they are, okay? All that today for $299, okay? Go to this link, rightsidetrading.com forward slash candle, $299. But like I said, for those who take action, right, if you sign up before now and Thursday, I will give it to you for $97. You come in for $97 if you sign up before Thursday, okay? So basically you come in and attend live, all right? Part of the reasons why I want you guys to attend live because I wanna update some new information on there and I wanna have a new recording with people that are there live so they can ask real life questions and all that kind of stuff. So for that, I'm saying I'll give it to you for $97, come in. If you don't attend the live workshop or you don't sign up for the live workshop, then after the workshop is over, it'll go back to the 299. So you still be able to get in at a really, really good discount, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying for those who sign up, because it's in two days, and so I know time is short, you do that. Now, the other thing is, for those who do that today, now I know that you can sign up by Thursday, but if you do that today before midnight tonight, before midnight tonight, only for those who did that, you will get access to that webinar and the right side report, okay? so. It will be able, you'll be able to review it because it's gonna be recorded. So yes, you'll be able to review it anytime. Uh, I will give you the link where you can go, you can watch it anytime you want, as many times as you want, it's always gonna be there. Does that make sense? Uh, plus again, every Monday for the next month, you come in live workshop where I will show you how we are doing this in real life, what stocks we're talking about. In the right side report, you'll get the right side report that we send out every single week. We come in on Monday, we analyze things, we talk about what's going on. We try our best to stay on the right side of the market without having to guess, looking at indicators and stuff like that. So guys, take advantage of it. For $97, this is not even an investment. I won't even consider an investment. Some of you guys are gonna spend $97 before the weekend is over. But $97 to understand, you get everything. You understand the seven candlesticks. I always say the seven candlesticks to me is like the alphabets of trading. Most people know that in the English language, there's 26 alphabets. In trading, there's only seven you need to master. I'm gonna give that to you for $97. Then I'm gonna show you how to use it, right? Then you get to watch as I'm doing this live in this, okay? Uh, do you have a scan? I'll show you how to scan for this. Okay, Pat uh, Patel, I will show you how to, yes, so there is a scanner, yes. And this is why I said, you know, if you looked over here when I was talking about how to find them each day, each week, each month, uh, where was that? When I was showing you this right here, uh, this right here, how to find them on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. I will show you how to do that. That's what the scan is for. Okay, so how you can see that. Um, but again, because I'm also gonna show you what indicators to use to kind of like, so, cause this is where some people are like, oh, I don't need it. I just know how to like, use a, uh, I, can, I can figure out how to find those, uh, uh, the signals on, on my own. And I'll just take what I've learned over here and I'll just use it. And you can, you could. But again, once you start seeing even the extra stuff, all these little nuances that makes it even better and say, hey, don't trade it this time. This is not a period to be trading this. This is a period to be trading. So part of what you see is like the ones that might fail, it's usually because again, they fall outside the scope of some of the things that you're gonna be learning that I'm gonna be talking about on Thursday. Does that make sense? So definitely get it, it's $97, ladies and gentlemen, $97. It's, it's just a matter of, do you want to or do you not? Did you learn something today? If you learned something today, for $97, you can learn a whole lot more. 
and we're always available to answer any questions that people have. Once you become one of the people that signed up for the courses, you send an email regarding anything regarding to the course or right side candle or the things that we talked about, I have no problem answering those questions for you, okay? So again, you get all these things, $497. The ones in yellow are the only for those who sign up by midnight tonight, so please remember that. So you can still get it for $97. If you sign up before Thursday, before the workshop begins at 7.30, you will get this, you'll get this, okay? If you sign up before midnight tonight, you'll get those two in addition to this. If you wait to after the workshop, you'll still be able to get these top two right here. The only thing is you will have to pay $299. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, can I show two stocks that are shown the right side candles today? I could, but I'll have to run a scan, which I don't want to run a scan right now. Okay, I don't want to run a scan right now because then you'll have to see how I do the whole process. So if you come in, I promise you, if you ask me that same question, Patel, if you ask me that exact same question on Thursday night, I promise you, I will show you how to do that. Matter of fact, you wouldn't even have to ask me because you know how to do it yourself. Okay, you'd be able to do that yourself. Okay, but I could show you. I just don't want to do that on this call right here because then that will be showing everybody how to do it. All right, I hope that helps. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, this market is bullish for anybody who wants to know. Um, you know, I, I've been trying to tell people, I say, hey, market is going higher. The market is at bottom. We are looking for a market that is ready to go higher, okay? Um, there are some huge, huge warning signs. This is the monthly chart of the S&P 500. Here's the Russell 2000. Notice what we had here on the Russell 2000, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Now, notice this. What is this right here? Boom. That is a right side candle, ladies and gentlemen. What is this right here? That's confirmation of the right side candle, okay? And this is on the monthly chart. So what does that tell me? It tells me, big picture, something big is about to happen in the market. This is the Russell 2000. And so December, because of the Fed announcement, you know, remember how we had in, uh, what was it? Uh, in, in 2016, when the, when the, when the, um, when the Brexit situation happened and I showed you how it dropped pretty big, but then what ended up happening was that it reversed. Well, guess what? If this is the end of the month, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the month, right? So we already got the confirmation of the right side candle. December came, Fed came out, messed everything up, boom. But look at what's happening now. We're back to where we were before. And what is this now telling us? Not only are we back to where we were before, but today is the last day of December, of January. Today is literally the last day of January. And look at what it looks like it's going to do. Close with another right side candle. So people will ask, oh, do we then need to wait for another month of confirmation? No. Why? Guess what? This was, your con this was it right here. You had your line right there. We had a confirmation. Fed came out, messed up the market. But look at what it's doing right now. Coming right back. Okay. And that's kind of like what we're looking at. Can I get the two monthlies in five to six months? I don't have time to start trading now. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the monthlies. Okay. I'm not sure what you mean by the monthlies, Barbara. Uh, help me out there. Uh, does this work on commodity futures and currencies? Yes, it does. Absolutely does. Okay. Um, yes, it does. So we, we've used it on now. It even works on cryptocurrencies too as well. I have students who have done this with cryptocurrencies too as well, okay? So we'll see as far as I'm concerned. So the only question is, is this the, the, the level or is this the level that we are going to go to, okay? And that's what we have to figure out now. Does that make sense? But either way, one thing I do know is that this is trying to do what? Go higher. So if you know this, if you know, and, and this is where I tell people that there's no guessing when it comes to the stock market. The data is there, it's right there, it's communicating this to us, it's letting us know what's taking place. If we know that this is about to take place, then what happens? Where do you place your stop? Your stop always goes at the bottom of the right side candle. That's where you originally place your stop, okay? If it gets taken out, then something is happening. And so that's why, if you recall in 2016, when I said that Brexit thing happened, I knew I was going to be taken out. So that's why I took out all my 
stops. Again, I don't recommend that, but I took my stops out because I was hoping that it was going to be a knee jerk reaction. It worked for me, but it's not something I recommend. Okay. Uh, in December, when December dropped and everybody's panicking, I'm saying, no, I'm not. I'm not. What time on Monday? It's uh, 7 30 p.m. Eastern time. And again, if you can't attend live, as long as you register, we treat you as somebody who was there live. Okay. So if you can't attend live, no worries, but just make sure you register. Again, if you register by tonight, midnight tonight, register Eastern time, you get everything, all the bonuses, the whole shebang. Okay. Um, if you don't, you can still get it, get in for ninety seven dollars. You'll get the recording. Uh, you get the PDF sheet because I think understanding the seven candlesticks is important, uh, which is going to only help boost your trade in. You know, significant. That's another thing I tell people. Some people I said. $97, have you lost more than $97 in the stock market? Or would you invest in $97 to help you uh, minimize your mistakes in the market and maximize your gains based on being better selected? Yes. Uh, do you take PayPal? Yes, we do. Uh, so for the, anybody who wants to pay through PayPal, send us an email at info at right side trading, okay? Send us an email at info right side trading and just say, hey, can I use PayPal to pay? and they would make sure that they take care of that for you. Uh, Barbara says, um, the two things that you get for a month. Um, so yeah, so if you pay for it now, Barbara, yes, we would extend it to that, we extend it to, to that time, okay? So um, yeah, just again, as long as you pay, then we would extend it to whenever you want to use it. Just just let just let them know, say, hey, I'm paying this, but I don't want to start until X, Y, Z now. And then she'll take care of that for you too. Okay, Barbara? Uh, but that's my promise to you. And just let her know Wally said it's okay in case they try to like, you know, come back. It's my wife. My wife will be the one. She handles all my admin stuff. So, um, you know, so she's a very nice lady. Anybody who meets my wife, her name is Tanya. Super, super sweet lady. That's why I married her. But we would take care of it. One of the things we try to do is make sure that we help people because trading, I know, is tough for a lot of people, but our goal is to help you do better. Uh, thank you, Anna, for putting that in there. Info right side trading, you should see that now, William. Uh, info right side trading.com. If you go there, send an email to info right side trading and say, hey, um, help me out with um, um, what was it? I think you, uh, do you take PayPal? It's like, I want to pay with PayPal. Can you send me the link? She'll do that. That's why she married me. Exactly. You know, we are college sweethearts, actually. I met her in college. First time I saw her in love. I was like, it was love at first sight. So people who say that doesn't exist, to me, it does because it happened to me. I can't vouch for anybody else. But what I can say is that literally the day I saw my wife, and we were, kid you not, we were at a Bible study. Uh, I was invited to a Bible study first week on campus at University of South Florida. And I was invited to a Bible study. I went there and there she was standing. And I said, oh, my, I know I'm here to like learn about the Bible, but my goodness, that woman right there is going to be my wife. And I don't, I, I can't even tell you how I knew. I just saw her and I was like, she's the one, you know, and, you know, we've been married 20 years now, 20 years we've been married. And so I'm definitely one of those that felt, you know, fell head over heels in love with her, uh, sight on, you know, first, first time I saw her. Okay. But. Our job and our goal is to help people become better traders, better investors. So take advantage of it. And I again, $97, hopefully nobody's saying they can't afford $97. If you say you can't afford $97, then you definitely need to be in here. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Um, I hope that helps. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if you have any other questions, just let us know. Info right side trading. Anna, thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, if I can get the recording to Anna, that would be great. Uh, for the workshop, what if we can't make the workshop? It's recorded, Chris. Okay. It's recorded. So if you cannot make the workshop, still go ahead and register. It's going to be recorded. You'll get it the very same day, uh, that same night, uh, or the first thing the next morning, you'll be able to get the recording. And again, after you watch it, Okay, after you watch it, let's say you had questions, but because you were not there, so you couldn't ask those questions while you were there, I encourage you, please send me the questions. You know, just send me the question. Hey, uh, at minute so, so and so, you said this, this, and this. Um, here's my question. Write that down. And I like that because then what I'll do is every single person that bought, um, 
if you don't mind, I, I just, you know, I just blur out the name. I don't include anybody's private information, but I say, okay, here's a question that somebody else asked, but it, it only goes out to all those people who registered for this. Okay, here's a question that came out uh, from uh, from one person. They asked this question, blah, 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 blah. Here's my answer to them. So I send that email to everybody. So again, everybody can see, you know, so you might see the email. So, oh, I already knew the answer to that. But he's like, oh, wow. Thank you so much. I didn't even know that you asked, you know, I didn't even think to ask that question, but I'm glad that Chris asked that question. Now I know this information. Patel might be the one that comes and say, hey, what about this, this, and this? I'm like, okay, this is how you do it. And so whatever my answer is to Patel, minus any personal information, I take that and I send it to everybody else too. I say, here's a question. Here's the, here's how I responded to that so that everybody can learn. And then when you come in on Monday, for those who come in on Monday nights, because you took advantage of the $97 today, those who come in, then I also share that too. And then I show examples after examples, uh, just to make sure that we all understand this. Because I think the biggest thing in the stock market is understanding. Okay. If you understand and you develop the skills to understand how the market moves, what to look for, what to pay attention to, what the chart is communicating to you, you do well. All right. God bless y'all. Again, I'm a sign off, but if you have any questions, just let us know. I look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday night. Goodbye, everybody.